can probably hear the rain in the background. I think summer is finally over here in the Pacific Northwest and fall has arrived. I think my days of spinning donuts in the field are over. I decided to bring old Spence into the shop to prep it for installing these new motor mounts and for rebuilding the fuel injectors. When I got it up in the air, I thought, well, why not pull off a couple wheels and do a quick chassis inspection? That's all part of my, you know, pre-restoration analysis, if you want to call it that. But when I pulled these wheels off and came over here and started poking around, I had a few surprises, and I want to share those with you now. Take a look at this. When was the last time you saw slotted brake discs on a W123? I take back everything I said about lack of maintenance. <laughs> Obviously, this owner wanted some performance brakes here. I failed to mention, by the way, that the pedal's kind of going down to the floor when I drive this thing, so I've got to do a whole brake surface on it. But it wasn't just the brake rotor. It was looking in here. Look at this. This is all original factory paint. Notice the lack of rust. And the key points, you know, we're talking up around the battery tray area. We're talking about in this area over here and in this area over here. This is really clean. It also looks like it's had some recent Bilstein shocks installed. And I'm looking at the upper control arm bushings. They look okay. And I'm checking for play. You know, it looks like all the tie rods. We've got some steering box play, but the tie rods are all tight. The idler bushing looks good. So initial impressions here is, wow, I like what I'm seeing here underneath this car. Maybe old Spence has some more surprises for us. One of the key elements in doing a preliminary inspection on a W123 diesel is checking for fluid leaks. You can't believe how these things can leak. They can leak everywhere. Coolant, transmission fluid, brake fluid oil. So I usually take the car and park it somewhere overnight after running it hard. And you did see me run it hard out there in the field. So we got the temps up and I pulled it into the shop here and parked it overnight. And look at this. I expected to see drips all over the place, but look at the floor. That's the transmission area and rear end area there. We're moving up front here and right there. Guess where that is? That's right below the oil filter housing. And then let's move forward. I expected to see some more drips up around the front of the engine. Look at that, right to my shoes. And this is out in front of the car. So that's it right there. We have one oil leak. And it looks like a fairly good leak. But let's see, maybe that one's going to be simple to fix. And if we can fix that, we're going to have an old diesel that can park in your driveway and not ruin your concrete. My best guess is this leak is probably coming from the bottom of the oil filter housing where it bolts up the block. Look at that. It's not leaking there. I've hardly ever seen a diesel not leak out of that critical gasket right there. So let's move further back. It looks like it's over off the side there. Let's take a closer look. It looks like it's either leaking out of the oil pressure line or it's leaking out of that banjo fitting that takes oil up to the turbocharger. If either one of those are the cause of the leak, those are very easy fixes. I don't see any evidence of leaks at the rear main seal. That's a tough one to fix. So that makes me happy. Then moving back to the transmission, I don't think I've ever seen a 123 automatic this clean with this many miles indicated. I'm beginning to wonder whether this car hasn't had an engine and transmission transplant. That's pretty dry. I know some of you diesel enthusiasts who live in the rust belt, you're going to be a little jealous of this as I move the camera down the left side belly pan Look at how clean this is. Now let's take a look at the right side, including the rocker panel. Look at that. Look at this right rear quarter fender panel. 
you know, usually there's rust out right in that corner, but we are only picking up a little surface rust. Look at the inside of this fender well, and then we're going to roll forward to this area here, which is a really common rust area in the W123. I mentioned fading brakes. I'm not sure what the problem is yet, but we got rusty rear brake discs and rusty calipers. And if you look around here, these hoses get neglected. Sure enough, we've got a crack in this flexible brake hose. So we've got some work to do there. But look, I'm looking at these axle boots. I can't believe how good these axle boots are. Isn't that something? No cracks. Now over here, you can see that axle's been replaced. But this one looks original and looks excellent. Rear mount looks okay. And the rear pumpkin, look, no seal leaks. And no leaks coming out of the front. Wow, that's pretty interesting. But of course, look at that. We do have donut deterioration. You know how much I love donuts. The exhaust system looks good. It sounds good, so I won't have to do anything with the mufflers. The rear pan for the spare tire is not all dented up. Look at that, that's really nice. And then I'm gonna show you this rear bumper. Now these rear bumpers will corrode up in there and when they do, the bumper can fall off on the road. That's aluminum and it will disintegrate if exposed to road salt. So we have a car here that I believe has never been subject to road salt. The flex discs are old, of course, but I don't see any cracking either in the rear one here or in the front one here. This one looks like it may have been replaced. I started this video talking about the motor mounts and kind of got distracted, but here you can see the metal part of the mount right here. This is that metal plate deflector and here's the arm so you can see the arm is literally sitting on top of the metal so we're talking metal on metal here you can't believe how annoying it is to sit inside old spence when it's idling the vibration is almost unbearable so these motor mounts are going to have to get replaced they're not going to be real fun because when they're all collapsed like this sometimes it's hard to dig the rubber out and even get to the bolts that hold the mounts to the subframe. On the right side, I really can't see the mount from the front, but it is surprising to see this engine shock in place and still functioning on this old engine. Let's take a closer look at this rear transmission mount. Uh, that's a no-brainer. Look at how it's cracked and collapsed. So we always replace the transmission mount when we do the engine mounts. I'm sure you know why I'm smiling. <laughs> I'm feeling a lot better about old Spence today than I was yesterday. I mean, getting under the car and poking around underneath there, I'm certainly looking at a lot of pluses, which help to offset the negatives that we looked at yesterday. I apologize for getting a little sidetracked there, but I just had, I, I couldn't resist. I just had to poke around under there, even though the focus was going to be on the motor mounts. We'll do the motor mounts in the next video. I'll get Jerson in here. We're going to get under the car here and <laughs> dig around in that old rotten rubber trying to get those old mounts out. Sometimes it's kind of a pain, particularly if you don't have a lift. So I'll go over the tools you'll need. I'll go over some tips and tricks that will help you replace your own motor mounts. And then I'll talk about what you can do if you don't have a lift, because it is a little bit harder if you don't have a lift. And just today I was thinking, you know what? I know there's some of you out there that are thinking about maybe getting an old diesel or you've got one that's needing some work. So what I'm going to do is during the month of October, probably all the way through Thanksgiving, I'm going to run some specials and those specials are going to be related to all the products I'm using to fix up this car here. We'll call them old Spence specials. Okay. That'll include the motor mounts and the tools. I'll maybe package them together at a special price. We'll include all the, you know, the nozzles, the purge tanks, the diesel purge, the valve adjusting wrenches, all those things I've been using to revive this car here. So if you're interested in working on your own diesel, if you're interested in going out and getting one of these and fixing it up yourself, 
those things will really help you. And so all you have to do is go to my website and put Old Spence or Old Spence Specials in the search box and it'll take you to everything that I'm putting on sale. Or you can click on show more below this video and in future videos and I'll send you to new links. But the search box is going to work the best because that's going to keep you right up to date as I post new things every week.